So today we're going to do a disassemble, locking, and reassembling video on these two wheel horse transaxles. This one came out of a wheel horse Raider. It's a UniDrive part number 2988185. And this one I'm not entirely too sure what it came out of. There's some differences between the two, but both are three speeds with a high and low, and they are both out of wheel horses. So the only real difference would be these brake shafts. This one is a lot larger, that is keyed, and then this one on the Unidrive is a double D shaft that is smaller. And then up here is a uh, dipstick with a fill for the oil, and this one does not have it. Other than that, I'm pretty sure they're the same exact axles. Um, I just previously locked another one that was, I think it's considered a 10 pinion. It has a limited slip differential in it. It's pretty neat. I'll sh uh, post some pictures in the video so you see what that looks like. But I'm not entirely sure what these look like on the inside, so let's set up the GoPro and start tearing them apart. And once I get them split open, I'll show you the differences. Before we get too involved, I would just want to show this to you guys real quick, and this is also the first step to disassembling. You want to take off this uh, 7 16 nut along with the uh, set screw that goes down into the shifter. But as you can see, this one, there's no side to side play, and it shifts in the gear all nice and dandy like. But what I found a common issue with these wheel horse transaxles along with uh, some Cub Cadets as my own experiences the welds break on these Shifters and then the shifter can just go flop back and forth and it makes it difficult to get it in and out of gear So when, once I get this apart, I'm gonna have to weld that up and clean up the weld so that way it can Act like this one again where it does not go side to side so you just take that little bolt out and then the shifter pops right out. And ooh, that is gross. Another big tip before you go ahead and start tearing apart the casings is you wanna sand up your axle shafts and your input shafts because I actually had to, well, heat up these hubs and air hammer them off so the shafts were all galled up and rusty. So if you're trying to say you have good axle seals and you go to pull this through, all that rust buildup is gonna get inside the interior bearings and it may screw up that seal. So if you got some uh, scotch pad, some 80 sandpaper or steel wool or something, make sure you clean up your shafts before you go ahead and actually tear them apart. So got all the bolts out. Uh, the last one that I did, I had it flipped the other way and I had some troubles with the high and low range. I'm not sure if this is the correct way to disassemble it. Uh, we'll find out and if it's the incorrect way, I'll make sure to let you know and we'll do it the correct way on the next one. So this one has definitely seen some better days. It's a little bit, there was water in it, there was some sludge, but, so you got this big, big bowl gear. Everything's on needle bearings with seals, nice big axle bearings. So these things are definitely beefy. This is 
where your shifter comes down in over here and shifts it for you. We're going to try and keep all that intact. So that's, this seems like this is the correct way to pull it apart because on the last one I pulled it apart opposite and both these shafts popped out and there's a ball and spring that go in here to locate those and all these gears were laying everywhere. So now we just got to pull out the axle. See if we can do that without making too much of a mess. And there you go. That is the rear axle to a wheel horse garden tractor. Nice big axle bearing. Nice big needle bearings for all the shafts. Now I got this one set up right there and I'm gonna leave that one there until I go to reassemble. So I'll pull this one off the bench and we'll pull that one up and see if there's any differences other than the brake shaft and the fill on the top of the case. Back to this, this is the second transaxle I pulled apart and this one was a lot worse. It was had a lot more oil on the outside, a lot dirtier and it was full of water whenever I drained it out at the junkyard. This is a whole lot of buildup of rust. The bearing seems to be good still, and so do these needle bearings. So what I'll do is I'll clean out the case, and this is significantly worse than the last, and it looks like the diff is different. The axle on the left is out of the unit drive with the brake shaft that has the double D on it. This is inch and an eighth axles with a cast iron carrier here. This is out of the other axle. This, these are also eighth and an inch axles, but it has an aluminum uh, carrier. This one had five 3 8 bolts with uh, nylon lock nuts holding it together. And this had four 3 8 bolts with just regular old school lock nuts on it. So I'll pull them apart. Let's move the camera back. See if we can see the difference. So we'll do the cast iron one first. And there it is just looks like a typical like a 633A transaxle so if you wanted to you could do the gear flip situation but I'm gonna be welding it up so this is the cast iron one I believe that's the most common diff for one of these wheel horse axles and then we'll go ahead and pull the aluminum one apart and this is a 10 pinion and it is a limited slip the last one I did had a cast iron uh, housing this one has aluminum so this 10 pinion is pretty pretty nifty oh, it's even coming out of the bull gear there so that ring inside there is the limited slip. It pushes pressure out on the pinions, but there's five gears on this side and then there's five on the opposite side. So we will go ahead and lock both of these. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be welding these together. So if you don't have a welder, I do not have a answer for you to how to lock these. These ones you can flip a couple of the gears and make it work, but it's really not strong. So I will take these to work and weld them up. Uh, welders at work are a lot better than my uh, Hobart 140. So I'm not going to have any video of me welding them up, but I will show you 
whenever I get them done, I will show you exactly where I welded them and how I had them set up to weld. So these are the lockers that I have come up with. So on these normal wheel horse or like a 633A, you're gonna have these opposing gears that you can actually just take two of these and flip them and put the gears on both sides, but it's really not that strong because you only have two points of contact on each shaft as opposed to all of these. So this <coughs> bull gear, if I can get this without getting all gross, this bull gear goes in between these two halves and is what drives this with the uh, four bolts going through it. So all you gotta do is take four 3 8 bolts, cinch this down tight, and then that way this is all lined up whenever you go ahead and put that bull gear on. So you just clean these up real nice and put a nice heavy weld on each one of these gears. And then you have a locker. Now, for the 10 pinion, once again, the last 10 pinion I did, I did not clean out enough grease and this one I didn't either. So these welds are pretty darn boogery and gross. But what you want to do is you want to, you're going to have to get 10 bolts. And what you want to do is you want to put the bolts through all the gears so it's like it's together. And then you have to get your axle shaft and make sure that it fits in there on both sides for the gears. If you do not do this, you got 10 gears that may not line up in the end. And this, whenever I welded it, these went right in. So it might have heated up and moved a little bit. Oh, no, nope, there it goes. So you got to make sure that gear fits down in those 10 pinions on both sides. Because if not, you're going to weld this up and you're going to hate yourself because you're not going to be able to get your diff back together. But you're just going to go ahead and weld the innards of the gears together, which unfortunately they're just little baby tack welds, but it'll hold. So at this point, you're just gonna reassemble your diff the same way you took it apart. You gotta get the little pins lined back up. Just like that. And then you gotta take your bolts. And go ahead and bolt it all back together. <clears throat> now I do have RTV silicone sealant around the gasket edge. You can purchase a new gasket, but I'm not that kind of person on something like this. Now, whenever you took it apart, there's two different lengths to this axle. You can see the carrier over here on your left side is shorter than the one over here on the right. The longer one is gonna go downwards. So you just slide it down in, make sure it seats properly, and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your other case half, and then you're going to want to put that on. Now, I did go ahead and clean up the mating surface as much as I could. I razor blade it, wire wheeled it, and then cleaned it off with degreaser. And all my needle bearings that are in there, I put a little bit of... Uh, grease in there. Some may say you should do that. Some may say you shouldn't because it's uh, bathed in gear oil in there. But that's just what I like doing myself. And now with a little bit of force from the rubber mallet, we got it seated down there good. I'm spinning the input shaft and it looks like it's not having any issues spinning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosely tighten down all the case bolts and then I'm going to wait about a half an hour and then fully tighten them down. And then I'll reinstall the shifter and then it'll be 
pretty much ready to go back into the tractor. And the last portion to this reassembly is the shifter. All you gotta do is put her down in there, make sure she's just gonna wiggle it right down in. Oh, I went a little bit too far. You wanna just leave it a pretty much even with the top. Now, I'll come back over here real quick and show you. There's a little divot or a little set screw hole for the pin to go into. So if you go down too far, it won't line up, or if you don't go down far enough, it still won't line up. So you wanna kinda find that sweet spot where it'll line up. And there it is. And you also, whenever you wanna do this, if your shift boot is not in good, con good condition, you can find these on eBay for like 10 bucks. That's a good, uh, maintenance thing to do to these. I'm going to load this up with grease. I'm not going to fully do anything else to this yet because I want to paint it. I do not have the part numbers for the input uh, shaft or the brake shaft, but the seal number for these inch and an eighth axles from SKF is part number 11050. You can pick them up on Amazon or eBay for pretty cheap. So. I'm gonna paint this up, get it ready to go into the wheel horse, and hopefully this video helped you guys out. Hopefully it, unlike the first time I disassembled it incorrectly and all the gears went everywhere, hopefully this time you see this video, it'll help you out and help you figure out which ways to lock your transaxle. So hopefully you guys like this video, let me know. Let me know if you wanna see the other video of reassembling with all the gears torn out of it so that way it makes it a little bit easier on you. Until then, i got a video coming up on rebuilding the front axle on the mud down mark. So thanks guys, thumbs up, subscribe. Let me know what I'm doing good. Let me know what I'm doing bad. Have a wonderful day.